Hey, 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 everybody. It's Jade. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday thus far. All right, Vikings fans, can't go a day, you know, without some purple drama, some purple news, some, you know, stuff that's not so great, and then some stuff that's really exciting. So um, the not so great Adam Thielen, he has been placed on the IR because of that old ankle. So it sounds like Adam Thielen had to undergo, undergo surgery on his left ankle. And um, yeah, that's a, a bummer. So he's out for the rest of the season. Is it going to be two games? Is it going to be more games for the Purple? We don't know because oddly enough, there is still a minuscule chance of the Minnesota Vikings somehow sneaking into the playoffs. To do what if they get there? I'm not sure, but moving on. So again, Adam Thielen, he is now on the IR. He's going to uh, miss the rest of the season because of the ankle. So it seemed obvious that he was playing in pain uh, versus the Rams. I can't quite remember when he left the game, but that's a bummer. I'm sure he's extremely frustrated to add even more frustration to an already um, frustrated Adam Thielen. Um, so that's a bummer and bummer for the Vikings, but you know, hopefully he can get on the mend and come back, you know, better than ever afterwards. So next season and um, on the brighter side, Dalvin Cook has been um, activated from the COVID, COVID reserve, the COVID list. So sounds like he should be back for the game versus the evil to the east this Sunday. Slated for prime time. Is it going to be a prime time purple embarrassment? Ooh, we don't know. I'll have to wait and see. And in the brightest news of all of the newses thus far, the newses, Kyle Sloter. Welcome back. Welcome back to Kyle Sloter. So the Vikings, they re signed Kyle Sloter. It's been a couple of years. So welcome back, Kyle Sloter. The SOS for Sloter has been answered. I said many moons ago that they should have brought him back. I was annoyed when they let him go, but, you know, welcome back. And um, so the Vikings first saw him on the practice squad. I think it was a 2017. And then Sloter was the backup for my dude Case Keenum, who uh, Case Keenum was obviously playing for the injured Sam Bradford. And then um, Sloter was also on the team when Kirk originally came on, old Pizza Ranch boy, 2018. And then uh, on in the 2019, in the 20, in the 2019, in the year of 2019, uh, the Vikings decided to keep Kirk Cousins and to keep Sean Mannion as Kirk Cousins' backup. Uh, AKA Kirk Cousins emotional support backup quarterback and um, I'm convinced I'm just as convinced that as, as I am now um, vice versa whatever you guys dig that at the time when the Vikings uh, let Kyle Slaughter go they said so long see you later we don't need the Slaughter services anymore in 20 uh, 2019 that I think it was because there was too much pressure on Kirk because out of Kirk Cousins, Sean Mannion, and Kyle Sloter at the time, in my opinion, Kyle Sloter was the best quarterback of those three. So, you know, Kirk can't have any extra pressure, and obviously they're going to keep Kirk after Rick Spielman signed him for all that money. You know, the puppet master extraordinaire just did a little puppeteering, all right? So, um, anyway, that's kind of exciting, and it would be absolutely amazing to see Kyle Sloter start, and it would be cool to still see Kellen Mond. I mean, what is going on with Kellen Mond? Wouldn't it be something if somehow the Vikings traded Pizza Ranch Boy and that experiment was done forever, and Case Keenum returned, and then it was Case Keenum and Kyle Sloter all over again? What? And um, so moving on again, welcome back, Kyle Slaughter. We'll see what happens there. But I don't see I don't see Kellen Mond or Kyle Slaughter starting um at least the last game, the Bears game, if the Vikings somehow beat the Evil to the East this weekend. Like there's no way then. But stranger things have happened, right? And I'm sure the Vikings obviously needed a little bit of a safety net with all the, the the vid that has been going around the league. So it is yet to catch on to Kirk Cousins, but I'm sure the Vikings just need to be prepared in that instance as well. Anything can happen. And um, so moving on to um, some more, I guess, ending on more of like a negative note, but it's nothing that nobody saw coming. It's Justin Jefferson is the Stefan Diggs 2.0. I mean, people, are we surprised by this? No, for those of us that live 
in the realistic realm over here? No. We're not surprised by this. Like Justin Jefferson kind of, um, not exactly like questioning the play calling, but you know, he pretty much was, I don't remember exactly verbatim what he said, but you know, it's it's clear that he wa he wants to win. He he's here to play. He's here to ball. And the energy was low. He was kind of saying, and it's evident. I mean, it's evident to us as fans, obviously. At least those of us that hang out over in the RR, the realistic realm, we know. Like the players don't seem to really be having fun, and it's just we we can see. Especially the Vikings are sitting at seven and eight. It's just I'm sure that's not very fun. They're not jiving, and um, people. You know, leading into this season, it, it it was off. The energy was off, and it's just, it's too bad. But, you know, here we are again, people. There's always next year. There's always next year. And uh, let's see what happens these last two games. And there might be more games for Minnesota. But, okay, then what? Then what? It's like, it's at this point, too, it's just like ripping the Band-Aid off slowly. Very, very slowly. Just right off. Yeah, right off, but... We'll see. Two games left. Evil to the East and then the Bears to end the regular season, let us say. And um, yeah, with all that being said, I hope everybody's having a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And um, I feel like there was another thing I wanted to touch on with the Justin Jefferson um, situation. But um, I don't think... Um, I think, too, with Justin Jefferson's comment about the low energy, and I think Anthony Barr mentioned it as well, and apparently the fans weren't doing their job. It's like, eh, it's not their job um, at the stadium anyway, at the Bird Graveyard. Um, but now I forgot where I was going. I'm just blathering away now, so I'm going to wrap it up here. But Justin Jefferson, the being frustrated, Anthony Barr. Oh, I was going to say that, you know, towards the end of the season now, now the truth starts coming out, right? Now the truth starts coming out. I wonder if we're going to hear more. We're going to hear more of what exactly has really been going on. A whole lot of people not really, you know, they're just kind of there going through the motions. That's kind of what it seems like with the Vikings at this point. So, scroll on, purple people. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week. And happy early New Year to everybody. Happy early New Year to everybody as well. So y'all take care and I will catch you on the flip side. Later.